Hey YouTube, it's ACU, and today we're going to discuss some important things in the realm of jailbreaking. So we're going to talk about iOS 9.1, its upcoming release, and the release of the next generation Apple TV. <laughs> All right, so getting started here, if you guys want a chance to win a brand new iPhone 6S in my giveaway, which will actually conclude next week, rate this video up and stick around to the end for complete instructions. Now, with that said, we're going to talk about iOS 9.1, but if you're watching this video shortly following its release, of course, on October 20th, then as of now, there is a current untethered jailbreak for the latest public firmware being iOS 9.0.2, and that's from Pangu. So if you have yet to jailbreak, I will have annotations on your screens now if you're on the desktop version of YouTube, as well well as cards. If you're not, you can check down below in the more info. If you're on mobile, I will have a direct link to my untethered jailbreak tutorial there. You can of course also navigate to it simply by going to my channel and you should be able to find it directly linked to on youtube.com slash iCrackYourEyeDevice. Now with that said, let's talk about iOS 9.1 before we actually get into the potential jailbreak aspect of things and whether iOS 9.1 will actually close the jailbreak. So I created an in-depth video recently going over the latest beta version being iOS 9.1, beta 5, and the corresponding public beta, and I discussed all of the new features found in the releases, and if you happen to miss that video, we'll have it linked for you guys directly in the cards as well as the annotations, again, on your screen screens now. But basically iOS 9.1 brings a slew of new emojis. So of course the little icons that we love to use to spice up our text. But beyond that we will see some new minor wallpaper variations to some of the stock planetary options found in iOS 9 in general. We will also get a new live photos API specifically for developers so we should see third party applications be able to utilize and again make use of live photos. Next we have a new messages setting that will allow you to to toggle off the contact icons that appear, of course, inside of the regular messages app to the left of the conversations. And finally, possible battery life improvements, excluding any other potential new features that Apple decides to add in from the time of iOS 9.1 beta 5's release. And of course, in addition to that, these aren't really new features, but we will also receive support for the fourth gen Apple TV, as well as the iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil. Those two devices kind of go together, but essentially the Apple TV and iPad Pro. So speaking of Apple TV, as I revealed in my unboxing of the device, you can actually utilize an iOS device that's on iOS 9.1 so long as it's not the iPad 2 to quickly and efficiently set it up. It will automatically connect to it and sign into your Wi-Fi network as well as your Apple ID just based on the settings on your device on 9.1. So iOS 9.1 has to be released before the Apple TV is. It's basically a requirement to more quickly and easily set up the device. So let's briefly look back at some of the past iOS 9 releases to try and pinpoint this before we get into some new information. So iOS 9 was originally released on September 16th. That was a Wednesday. 9.0.1 dropped one week later on the 23rd and 9.0.2 a week after that on the 30th. So it looks like Apple is starting to go with a Wednesday schedule for public iOS 9 releases and the chances of them continuing this throughout iOS 9, particularly where iOS 9.1 is concerned, are very, very high. So it is definitely possible that we could see iOS 9.1 drop tomorrow, which will be this Wednesday on October 21st. However, what's more likely is that they release it next week to not only prepare for the Apple TV, but also to finalize things where iOS 9.1 is concerned and to finish all of their testing related to the firmware. But again, it could drop as early as tomorrow, October 21st. So that's absolutely key and paramount for you jailbreakers to be vigilant when Apple Apple actually releases the firmware. I'll get into that in more detail in just a second, but if iOS 9.1 drops next week, doesn't that mean that the next generation Apple TV will also need to be released next week? Yeah, that's actually correct. So let's go ahead and switch on over here to a new report that's discussing the WSJD Live conference, which of course is put on by the Wall Street Journal. Now, there are a number of CEOs that are interviewed during this conference, one of whom this year was actually Tim Cook, Apple's CEO. Now, during that specific Specific portion of the interview. Let's actually go ahead and scroll down here. He talks about the Apple TV. So as you can see here, we're just starting to get into the Apple TV information that was discussed during the conference, and he revealed that Apple TV orders will kick off on Monday. So this coming Monday, October 26th, and shipments will start by the end of the week, probably on Thursday or Friday. So the 29th or the 30th of this month, just in time to fulfill Apple's previous claims of an October release for the set-top box. So in 
summary, while iOS 9.1 could be released tomorrow, it definitely makes more sense that they'll wait until next week, following when the Apple TV is available to order on Monday and preceding when it's actually going to be released. Again, next Wednesday could very likely be the release date for iOS 9.1, especially based on Apple's plans for the Apple TV 4 or fourth generation device. Okay, so now that all of that's out of the way, what about the jailbreak? Will we be able to jailbreak iOS 9.1? Well, essentially it was previously thought that before an iOS 9 jailbreak was released, we needed to have iOS 9.1 because of course we would receive not only the fourth gen Apple TV, but also the iPad Pro, and hopefully we'd be able to jailbreak the latter of the two devices. Again, the all new massive 12 inch iPad, but that didn't end up being the case. Pangu ended up jailbreaking iOS 9.0.x and they specifically targeted iOS 9.0.0. So why did they do that? Why wouldn't they just wait to include support for the most devices possible as well as the latest firmware, especially since we knew iOS 9.1 was coming? Well, that might have actually had something to do with it. Again, we knew iOS 9.1 was coming. So following the release of Pangu, there was some talk on Twitter about the possibility of the method Pangu utilized to achieve a kernel exploit being closed in iOS 9.1 beta. So if that's the case, by the time iOS 9.1 is released, Apple wouldn't even really have to do anything for them to patch the jailbreak. Now, of course, they could very well close additional vulnerabilities, but just the inability of the kernel exploit to function on iOS 9.1 would be enough to cause the jailbreak to not function on the firmware. And of course, it would have forced Pangu to have released the jailbreak for iOS 9.0.2, which as we now know, they ended up doing. So what that means is that by the end of this month, the jailbreak will no longer function on the latest public firmware and any update to iOS 9.1 will result in the instant loss of your untethered jailbreak until a new utility is made available. Now hopefully Taiji has had adequate time to work on a brand new utility for iOS 9, particularly in this case, iOS 9.1. We don't know yet. We will hopefully know more in the future. And of course, just like Pangu is doing, Taiji is now in stealth mode, so to speak. They are working on a new untethered jailbreak. They have confirmed it. Whether they actually have something that's feasible for iOS 9.1 or not yet, we simply don't know. And as for the current Pangu jailbreak for all iOS 9.0.x users, what that means is that you have to be extra cautious when connecting your device to your computer following the release of iOS 9.1. So do not blindly click any prompts that you receive. Again, when plugging in via standard USB cable to your computer and launching iTunes, because it could very well result in a software update to iOS 9.1. However, there is something that you can actually install inside of Cydia. It's called No Please Recovery and what this will do is it will actually block remote devices, so like your computer for instance, from triggering recovery mode on your iOS device. It has been confirmed to be working on iOS 9, but I wouldn't trust this alone. Again, guys, just know when to cancel out of the pop-up that you receive inside of iTunes, but that can be your fail-safe, so to speak, if you need it. And of course, that's pretty much everything we know right now pertaining to not only iOS 9.1 and its upcoming release, but also that of the fourth generation Apple TV and the latest details on whether we'll be able to jailbreak iOS 9.1 and what we can expect moving forward. Again, I will definitely keep you guys updated in the future, so be sure to click the subscribe button down below next to my channel name if you have yet to, and also like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter for complete updates. Now, for those of you who are interested in winning an iPhone 6S, it's very simple. All you have to do is navigate to freeappsfast.com inside of mobile safari once you do sign up for an account it's very simple and then just download any of the sponsored apps you see in the main section and ensure that you earn points once you do go to the fourth tab and you see that referral link there take the unique part what appears after the equal symbol and post it in a comment on this video here i will have it linked for you guys in the cards it's really that simple and that's all you have to do so i hope you guys liked this video and enjoyed all of the information outlined in it and until next time this is ACU signing out. <laughs>